Hey guys, Pink Bunny Girl 43 here, and today we're going to be giving you guys a full tutorial on how we made Spotted Leaf Star Clan Warrior Custom for our Warrior Cat episodes. We decided to switch up her pattern instead of doing a tortoiseshell pattern going with more like Galico looks like Rachel does for the Warrior Cat speed paints of Spotted Leaf's Week. And I think that'll be more cohesive going forward. The old custom has a lot of fur on her too. So with this new custom, we need to be careful to not put too glossy and sticky of a top coat on her. Well, let's get this party started on making Spotted Leaf. I'll turn things over to Rachel and she can give you a full walkthrough of how to form a custom. Rachel here, so today we're going to walk you guys through the process of how I make War Cat customs. Alright, so we chose this adorable little deer for Spotted Leaf. She's so cute. We chose her because she has this adorable swoopy hair. And I just thought she looks so much like how I draw her in the speed paints. So we're going to start with my beautiful Zacto knife. We're going to be really careful and don't do like me. Try to keep your subject on the desk or something of a hard surface while you cut. It was very difficult to do all this process in front of a camera because I'm not used to it. It was my firstish time to really try to record everything. And by the way, that red stuff on my finger, fingernail polish, don't worry, not blood. Alright, so the next step, we're going to be chopping off all the ears and nose and legs. And just making sure the base gets really nice and smooth so that we can apply clay to it. This is one of my favorite parts. This is when it is a monkey worm, or in this case, a deer worm? I don't know. <laughs> yes. So first it becomes like... A, a head, basically, with, with barely any shoulders. And what's the important thing about having it just be like this little stump of a body? You always have to have enough of a stump off the neck to be able to hold the clay on there. And it has to be a good enough shape that the clay will hold. So that's why we leave it like that. Ooh, and now it's time to open up a new thing of clay. What's the brand of clay that you use, Rachel? Sculpty Air Dry Clay. It's my favorite, honestly. I've never found a better model. So why do you like this clay more than other kinds of clay? And why air dry? Well, I like it because it's like so soft and easy to mold. Also, it dries within two hours. It's so fast. So once you pull that nice fresh block of clay out, how much clay do you need to start to get your body formed? All right, so you're gonna take a pinch of clay and roll it in your hand. Then you're gonna take it and you're gonna roll it out into a cylinder. So you're gonna roll it against the surface until it becomes pretty uniformed across the whole surface of the cylinder. Just make sure you make it the right proportion that you want so that it's not too thin or won't break. So now that you've rolled out your little body, what do you do next, Rachel? So for this one, my ends of my cylinder was pretty rough looking so I took some water to my fingertips and just kind of molded the clay softer around the edge so that it wasn't such a harsh end. And so that end will be the bottom of your figure. So the next step you'll do is you'll cut where you want the chest to be and you'll make a groove right there at the top where you'll fit them in and you'll start squeezing them to make the shape shape around the neck and shoulders of the custom. And then we're gonna add a little bit of super glue so that it sticks real good. And we'll plop her back in there. Make sure her head is completely even with her shoulders, like the original way that the Willis Pet Shop was formed. Then we're gonna take some water and smooth it all over and make sure it's all sticking. It does take a minute for it to set and make like actually sturdy enough to work. So you can just leave it for a few minutes and then come back and reform it again if it has slipped a little bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of super glue and let her dry for a bit. It's important to make sure that the head keeps on bobbling during this point so that your bobble head doesn't get stuck because then what's the point? It's not a bobble head anymore. That's the reason why we use LPSs as the base. Alright, so we're going to set her in front of my favorite fan, which I bought at Walmart. It doesn't really matter which kind of fan you guys get, but my preferred brand was one that it heats and cools. That's important so that it doesn't overheat. So as soon as it starts getting too hot, I switch it right over to the super cold. So it doesn't start to crack the paint or melt plastic. So it's a really important step to remember to flip her from side to side because 
the heater might overheat one side and it will end up caving in the other side because it did not dry properly. And even though I tried my best to flip it back and forth, it still ended up doing exactly what I was trying not to do it. We might have had a lunch break in between and walked away. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So how do you fix it when one side gets a little bit more caved in or cracks along the side while it's drying? So you take a tiny little pinch of clay and you moisten it in your fingers and you make it into almost a paste. So it comes on real smooth. So you take it and you rub it along the sides until it kind of blends in and fills in the space. I like this kind of clay because it's so smooth and it works so well with water. We got this deer here with a body, but how do we make her into a cat? What's next, Rachel? All right, so we're gonna start by making a mouth and two ears. So we're gonna start with the mouth and it's, all you gotta do is take a tiny little pinch of clay and kind of like measure it against the face of the custom just to make sure you're filling enough space and pinch off any little too much excess and you're going to form it into a triangle but it's got to have a little bit of dimension to the triangle so the bottom of the triangle will go towards the bottom of the jaw and the two other sides will go towards the top so you got to form it to look like a upside down triangle so once Spotted Leaf has her little triangle, it's going to be her mouth soon. She needs some ears so she can hear things going on around her. So, Rachel, how do you make the ears? All right, so I'm going to take two clumps that are identical sizes, and we're going to form cones. So I take the cone in my hand, and I'm going to start making it flat on one side, and then forming it into a triangular cone shape. Mm -hmm. And it's important that the two clumps of clay are the same exact size so she doesn't have one ear that's super large on one side and one tiny ear. All right, so now we're going to be applying the super glue and adding on the cones. Which are ears, right? <laughs> that's right. And I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut off any excess clay. I'm going to cut the flatter side off the ear. So now it's finally starting to look a little bit more like a cat's ear, but there's still something missing. Rachel needs to carve out the insides because cats don't just have solid triangles on their heads. They have this furry bit inside. So how do you make that, Rachel? All right, so I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna hollow it out inside and then I'm gonna make sure I add some furry texture. Just kind of take the knife and kind of scoop out the clay as I go. If you wanted to do this a little less dangerously, you could maybe do it with a toothpick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But Rachel is a one-tool woman. I don't know. She likes to use the exacto blade for everything. Yeah, you could probably use a toothpick or even some other kind of tool, but <laughs> I'm dangerous. <laughs> yeah. So as you're doing this, make sure that you don't smush the ear with your finger. Make sure you keep on forming it back up to that perfect pointy precision of the ear so she has perfect triangles. Another thing I also have a problem with sometimes, I form it so perfectly and then I'm like hmm this ear is somewhat on the side of its head and not on the top where it's supposed to be pointing up so that's why you kind of let like a minute pass once it's like kind of set ish and then you can morph it still a little bit yeah and this is an interesting custom because she has a hair piece already part of her figure and some ones we do have bald heads and you add the hair later or they just end up not having any hair at all and so ears happen a little bit different if they've got hair. They end up being more on the sides of the head versus directly on top. <laughs> ears can't grow through hair. Anyways, I'm just trying to smooth around the ear and make it form a little bit better. And it's turning out pretty good. So let's just duplicate that on the other side and try to match it up as perfectly as possible. So Rachel, do you ever have a hard time making the other ear look the same as the first ear? Once you have that perfectly crafted ear? Yes, it's very difficult, and sometimes I even goof it up so bad that I just rip it off and then start over again. Okie dokie, so now it's time to get a mouth on Spotted Leaf so she can flirt the days away with Fireheart and his dreams. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just making sure that the shape is good again. So just make sure that it's a three-dimensional triangle, and we're going to add it on to her face. So just a little dab of super glue, and then press it on there. And what are you doing next? So I'm just kind of using my fingernail to move the excess clay off and try to like form it to her eyeballs. It's really important on this step to not get 
super glue into the eye crevice because that will almost always ruin the texture of the eyes. Oh yeah, and then when it's my job to come through and paint, that'll show up as like clumpiness in our eyes and we don't want that. Another thing was I was being really speedy around this round, so I was kind of doing her ears, mouth, and nose without even letting it dry. So I kind of did smush the ears a little bit. So when you guys are doing this at home, make sure you let them dry for a while. But once Rachel has it all smoothed out, it's time to add the definition of the mouth lines. You don't have to use a knife, of course, but you can use a tool. And I use it, my knife, to form a, an X almost. And then I carve out the smile lines. And of course, if your character has more of an open mouth at this time, you can cut out like a little bit more for an open mouth or draw a tongue or not out a smile if it's a grumpy cat. True. And so I'm going to like press in the lips a little bit further because, you know, cats, they got these little lip pieces that are more sticky outy and then her mouth bit goes in further. Wow, so she's really shaping up. Look at her so far. Look at that profile. She looks gorgeous. So now it's time for Rachel's favorite new tool. This thing is literally a lifesaver, especially during times when we're making a lot of customs all at once. It is her extruder. It's my favorite tool because it helps make so many legs. So I got this extruder from uh, Michael's probably. They sell them in like every craft store. In the clay section. So with these you can just add little different circle attachments and they'll shoot out the clay in that size. Mm -hmm. Like so. Beautiful snick <laughs> of clay. Sometimes the clay doesn't turn out the most perfect but you can cut around the pieces that are less perfect. The ones that kind of look aerated and kind of ripped up on the sides you can just reform them and shoot them back through the extruder. So I do this multiple times to get the most perfectest pieces. And so what Rachel is doing now is cutting the length that she wants for the legs. So they look pretty long from what she cuts out, but they get the bend of the leg and they get different because there's a paw going to be included in this also. So what's the general size you think of the leg? About the length of somebody's pinky, generally. Or, if that's difficult, maybe the length of the body, maybe plus an inch. It really depends on how short or tall you want them. And so if you want your custom to have strong boy legs, like thick muscular legs, just make the leg thicker. And of course, if you don't have an extruder, you don't need one, you can hand rule the clay out yourself, but we've just found it makes for more uniformity when we have the extruder and it makes things a little bit simpler for us. So basically we end up with four uniform looking noodles. All right, now that we have our four beautiful noodle legs, we're gonna take the X-Acto knife again and again, if you don't want to use knives, you can use any other tool, honestly. The clay is so soft, but I like to use sharp stuff so it doesn't mess me up in any way. So I take the knife and I'm going to form four beautiful little toes. And I'm also going to bend it in such a way that it looks like a paw. So we're going to repeat this step for all four legs. So just make sure that when you're cutting the toes that you make sure you have enough room for all the toes. Sometimes I get carried away and I accidentally don't make enough room for that last toe. But you can just like smooth some over and then try again. <laughs> Use some water and start over. That's what I do. But it's just important to have a good like base for the paw. They need a good enough paw to balance on. And of course, things like claws will come later with puff paint and stuff like that. So don't worry about that if that's a characteristic you want for your custom. So now that Spotted Leaf has her four disembodied limbs, let's get these attached so it looks a little bit less weird. Alright, so I start by measuring the leg compared to how high I want it. And then I mark with my thumb now where I should have the bend in the front legs. So then I take both my front legs and then I hold the second leg up and I mark with the thumbnail exactly where the other bend is and so that I make the bends exactly where they should be. And then I cut a general amount off because I don't want them to be too long. She's not spider leg, we know. <laughs> She's spotted leaf. So then I take the back legs and I bend them forward and then loop them halfway round. 
Kind of like a little question mark with a foot at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure that when you're bending that the clay is not crinkling too much. So if it does, just make sure you take some water and wet that down because it could cause problems later. All right, so I'm gonna add some super glue and put those legs on. This is the hardest part for me during the recording because it's hard to tell what I was doing actually during the filming. So her legs kind of turned out a little bit wonky, but then I fixed them in post. And that first putting down of the leg where you're adding super glue and putting it down is really critical because once you put it down, you really can't take it off, can you? Not unless you want to destroy it. So it looks a little bit stiff right now, but it does it does change once you like start actually standing them on all four feet. So we realized a little bit later because Rachel was recording this while making it that she might have made the body like a little bit too long and maybe a little too round on the booty. <laughs> She's thick. So we had to smooth her down and I decided to cut a little bit extra off just to make sure that she was a not too crazy round in the bottom because that can affect how the legs go on. So I add my super glue and I stick on the first back leg. Just make sure that you have enough to add to the thigh and then it evens out with the first front foot. So now that she's a two leg, we want her to become a four leg. So let's add those two other legs to her second side. So it's easiest if you flip her over upside down to do this part. So just like the other side, we glue, we slap her on, and then we start making sure that all the creases and crinkles are gone. One important thing to remember while you're sticking those on is that the toes end up turning outward so she doesn't look bow-legged. So now Rachel's adding the last leg in the back. Wow, so she's looking really good with four legs. So I'm just filling extra holes and creases with a bunch of super glue so that they all stick. And the, the there's like veins in the creases of the legs where I can't get to. So I just fill this with super glue so that they are uniformed once the paint goes on. So once you got all your four legs on there, you're going to want to let your custom sit for about five minutes, checking them in between because this is a really critical point. So you're going to want to place her on her back with her butt and her head as the things touching the ground while you're letting them dry. Because if you put pressure on the legs while they're not really firm enough yet, they'll twist and bend and collapse and break off. So you use her head and her butt while you're drying her for the first five minutes. And then you can come back in and make sure that all the toes are pointed the right direction and that the feet aren't going sideways. Unless you want them to have like a twisted paw at this time, then go ahead and do that. Or like a leg that's crippled. You can do that at this time, like just turn the paw the other direction and make sure she's balanced standing on it. But we're not doing that for spotted leaves. So now Rachel is just smoothing everything out, making sure she looks great. So one of the last steps for Rachel to work on before the painting begins is the tail. So in Spotted Leaf Speed Paints, I made her tail really thin and skinny, but that's really hard to make on a custom because a thin tail will be a broken tail in a sh very short time. So I started out with a pretty thick tail, but then I started to make it thinner and thinner. But it turned out a little strange, so I had to add on excess clay a little bit later once it was dry. But generally, how would somebody make a tail? You roll out a skinny snake and you make it smooth and make sure there's no crinkles in it. And so how would somebody attach a tail to their custom? So I add a bit of super glue and I smack it down and then I start blending it in. You gotta make sure it's not too overbearing by its own weight because sometimes it will just pull itself off. So you might want to find something to balance it with or just hold it with your own fingers for a few minutes there. Especially if you want it to be an up in the air tail, because that takes some time to dry. A tail that's a tail that's down on the ground generally will be okay, but you want to make sure it doesn't get like a flat part on it if you don't want it to have that. So you can see Rachel here is balancing it on a little rock. All right, so after a few hours of drying, you want to make sure she's completely dry before you move on to this step. This is sanding. So we use like this little Dremel thing. So this specific Dremel is from a manicure set where you can shape your fingernails and stuff like that. So if you want to go for a more cheaper option, we got this one just like at Family Dollar, so you can check that out. 
but you just go around and make sure to get all the little creases and everything flattened out the way you want it to be for the custom to look super smooth once the paint goes on. One important thing is to, when you're sanding around the neck to get all the little excess bits to make sure the clay looks like it forms perfectly around the neck, not like she's got this clay body clinging to her. You want to make her look like this entire thing is cohesive and working together so the clay pieces fade into the body of the LPS perfectly. Sanding honestly is pretty tedious and one of my least favorite parts of the custom making process because I get covered in dust and everything so it's helpful to put like a little box underneath you while you're sanding if you've got a lot of customs to sand at one time so that it can catch all the excess dust that comes off when you're sanding and doesn't make a huge mess. Even though it's super tedious, it does help the custom look so much better and not have all those fingerprints and stuff on it, so be sure to take the extra time to do the sanding. Woo, so now Rachel's job is done and it's time for me to take over. So, bye Rachel. Bye. So now I'm going to be painting here. I'm going to put a white base coat all over Spotted Leaf. So I'm not going to take too much time showing how all the painting goes. It's a white base coat going on, but it's important when you're choosing a base coat, especially for a cat that's going to have lots of other colors layered on top of them, to choose one that's going to be the major part of the design. So if it's like a white cat with spots like Spotted Leaf, choose white as the base coat. Honestly, painting a white base coat is one of my least favorite base coats to paint in my many different base coats I've had experience with because it's super opaque in some paints and chunky in others and it just takes a really long time. I usually do about five base coats, letting them have drying time in between, but I only had the patience to film myself doing one and I did the other ones off camera. So next I'm gonna be doing a beautiful spot design happening now. I'm using this orange paint from Craft Smart. I think we got these paints at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And so I'm starting off with a design that's gonna go around her eye. We're gonna be kind of trying to simulate what she looks like in Rachel's Warrior Cat speed paints. So I'll show you guys a picture of some of the examples that I'm going off of for her design right now. So usually when I'm working on a design, I try to get all of the things on a design done on one side first so I can have a good grip on the other side without getting paint on my hands. And so with this one, I just tried to add a lot of different splotches of different sizes to give her some variety. And it's important to remember that these are also going to need lots of different coats of them also. At least three for a color that's about this pigment because although it is showing up pretty vibrant, we want it to be at its ultimate vibrancy. Now I'm moving along the back. This one's going to go across the shoulder blades and onto the back. So I ended up covering her tail in mostly of this yellow-orange color. And then because she is an interesting kind of torty calico kind of cat. We kind of went with more of a calico design on this one because she's just three colors in our design of the orange, gray, and white. I do think that the torty designs are really pretty if people can pull them off. And we did enjoy making the one for her last custom, but we just wanted to be a little bit more cohesive with the speed paints, especially for this Star Clan Warrior version. So things are going to get crazy here in a minute as I start to add all the stars because we have to remember to make this design somewhat simple because she's going to be covered in a ton of stars in just a second here. Here I am using this deep gray paint along her back. It kind of looks black in this light, but in different lighting, it looks more like it's supposed to gray like it will on my filming lights. But here we go, giving her like this full coat of gray over her back and just trying to simulate what she looks like in the speed paints. It was quite difficult for me to film and paint this at the same time because I'm usually just having the custom like really close to my face while I paint. I don't know why, just like to do that. Anyways, but um, I had to hold this out far away from me with the camera there. And so I mostly just did one coat of me painting it and then did the rest of the coats off screen. And you can see as this goes along, I get a little bit lazier with filming as we go along. So for a cat with splotches like this, it's important just to give them some different splotches on each side to give some asymmetrical design, you know? So at this point, I have her base colors all laid down for what I want for her design basically to be. And things are going to change drastically here now. I just added a gradient in on all the spots. I wanted to have like an orange around the edges of them because I thought they looked a little bit too yellowy. So I used some acrylics and I kind of made them into a watercolor by going in from this, like giving it an outline and then going in from the sides with water and just watering it down and blending it in more. And so then next I am adding in her cute little paws and nose and ears. Cute, cute, cute. Giving her four little toes. 
So I really just skipped ahead here a lot and I went ahead and added her stripes into her tabby orange. So with the stripes, I mostly just did those with like a toothpick and I made them like kind of like tiger stripes. Real quick before Rachel comes on to do the eyes, I did add a lot of stars in between here and I put them all on. I had a hard time putting them on because they kept falling off and I was using different glues and stuff like that. That's why I didn't really show this on camera. And then it ended up once I had all the stars and sparkles and everything that I wanted, I tried spraying her with a, a matte base coat and that took away all the shine of the sparkles, made me so upset. And so I just went ahead and put more on and then I cover it with glossy fingernail polish, but a really high quality one that won't make her all sticky. All right, so it's my turn to do the eyeballs. So my favorite thing to do is the base of the eye and the inner color of the eye are down. I take my favorite marker, which is a felt tip marker, paint brush marker. It's pretty cool. It's like all flexible and stuff. So I just took it and I start with the outline of the eyes and then I work into the pupil of the eyes and I give her some pretty lashes. I just make sure that the top of the eye is thicker than the bottom and it just has a little bit more of like vavoom eyelash, kind of an eyelid looking thing. So then we do that on the other eye too and then we get down to the mouth and nose. So with the center of the eye, how do you form that oval in the center? I just kind of doodle the outline and then scribble it in. I was having a quite hard time once was when I was doing the eyelids because the paint with the glossy fingernail polish put on it kind of was repelling the marker. Mm-hmm. So it kept kind of trying to trying to run off. But I kept applying more fingernail polish on top of it so it would stay down. And then doing another layer and then doing it again over and over until it finally looked really thick. So we generally don't use fingernail polish on the majority of the custom. We usually just use it on the eyes to give them a little gloss and a pop. And the same on the nose to just make sure that marker doesn't run. Because otherwise, if it got wet or something, it would run and ruin the custom. And we don't want that. Mm -hmm. So for the last detail, I use my utmost favorite pen, a white gel pen. And you gotta be careful with the brands because some are thicker or more opaque than others. And they really won't work. So what has to happen is the fingernail polish has to be completely dried from the black and it has to be firm and not like squishy, you know how fingernail polish gets. So it has to be completely flat and dry. You take your gel pen and you make sure that it's writing really good and you start with an oval and then you really scribble it and like let the ink really sit really thick on there till it looks like a little white sunshiny bit. And then I put fingernail polish on top of it again, and then I do the pupil, the last little dot bit, and there we go. She's got beautiful sunshiny eyes. Oh my goodness! So after this huge long process, Spotted Leaf is finally done and ready to enter Star Clan. She's beautiful. No wonder Fireheart had a crush on her. She looks so pretty. So she has three different kinds of sparkles. She's kind of got a holographic sparkle and then like an iridescent stars on top of it. And then just like a silvery sparkle underneath. She's shiny. So beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so we had a lot of fun making her. We're so happy that we could show you guys this tutorial of behind the scenes making her. Hopefully it can help you guys at home making your own OC customs. I'm really happy with how her custom turned out and I'm excited to start filming with her very soon. What's your favorite thing about how she turned out, Rachel? I think her eyes turned out very bright and beautiful. Even though she's like a Star Clan cat, we did consider between having her have like dead looking eyes, but then we're like, nah, she's gotta look pretty. Yeah, I believe the last Spotted Leaf custom, which was all hairy and gross, it had white around the eyes and stuff like that, like white pupils, but we decided to go with black just to make her look a little bit less scary in Fireheart streams. Yep, she looks pretty. And so the whole reason behind us creating this Spotted Leaf custom is because Rachel didn't want to do animations anymore for the episodes, and so we decided to make a custom instead. So all his visions will be now done with this Spotted Leaf custom. And all the other dream sequences will be done with customs too. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial! I hope you guys learned a lot about how we make our customs! Can't wait to see what you guys come up with!
If you guys want to make a video and share it with us of you making your own custom following our tutorial, be sure to post it to YouTube with the hashtag or title, making a warrior cat custom like Pink Bunny Girl 43. Well, we love you guys so much and it brings us so much joy to see the customs you come up with. Keep up the creativity. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.